I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. These are words that are spoken in class every single day. Students who are late, who are walking through the hallway, will stop their walking immediately as soon as they hear the pledge spoken on the PA system. Or just during the morning announcements, everyone will be talking, but will all be perfectly quiet during the Pledge of Allegiance. Now, ignoring the fact that teachers have told us to be quiet, why exactly it do we stay quiet and so respectful for the Pledge of Allegiance? Is it out of respect? Is it out of patriotism? C conformity? Well, I, th these, this was a question I asked myself, I started asking myself last year, and I figured, eh, standing for the Pledge is pointless, I'm just gonna stay seated. I just stopped seeing the point in it, you know? So, I didn't stand for the Pledge of Allegiance since then. And, um, but, re but recently, early this school year, uh, a teacher asked me why I don't stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, and I gave a pretty bad answer. I just said, eh, I just, I just don't believe in it. And uh, I, I thought that was a pretty bad answer once I went back to my desk. And I figured, you know what, I could probably write an entire essay on this if given the opportunity. And uh, so I did for my senior legacy project, and now I'm giving the TED Talk. So, yeah, I dedicate this to that teacher that asked me, Mr. Sluzniak. So, my reasoning is the Pledge of Allegiance is wrong for a democracy because it gives false promises, supports blind conformity, and it is hypocritical. To understand the Pledge of Allegiance, it, you, you first have to know the history of it. It was written by Socialist Minister Francis Bellamy, and he intended it to be used globally by all nations, so it's not very specific. It was written, I pledge allegiance to my flag and the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As you can tell, the flow is really weird and hard to read because it's not what we're used to. But, um, so America used that, and in 1923, uh, we added the flag of the United States of America, and, um, and then in the 1950s, to combat, to combat the godless communists in the McCarthy era, um, under God was added to it. And now that is the first hypocrisy that seems to be the most popular among people against the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, the First Amendment says that Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. Obviously, God is an establishment of religion, and not every American believes in God. And it is a law in America that schools do require the Pledge of Allegiance. So, uh, so if the United States is going to use the Pledge of Allegiance, it shouldn't be picking favorites when it comes to religious beliefs. It should respect all and not mention it at all since, you know, not everyone believes in God. Not saying you should or shouldn't, but, yeah. Um, now let's go on to the other hypocrisies. The, the sentence, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. I'm going to start off with indivisible. Uh, we, we are not indivisible. This is not an indivisible country. This is a very divisible country. We, Democrats, Republicans, Lib liberals, conservatives, whatever. We disagree on everything. Highly divided. We, the American people are split over everything from transgender bathrooms, gun control, immigration, and the freaking red cups from Starbucks on Christmas. And of course, most, most of all, the most polarizing thing right now is this current election. And uh, I, I have asked adults, people much older than me, if this is the weirdest election they've seen their whole life. They agree. It is a very weird and polarizing time period to be in right now. We are not indivisible. We're very divisible. And so to go on from the fact that nobody agrees on anything, we also don't really agree on what the definition of liberty and justice is because everyone has a different idea of what that is. You know, you could be pro-guns, anti-guns, be pro-gay marriage, anti-gay marriage, all that, you know. 
And so everyone has a different idea of what's justifiable or is, you know, true freedom. And um, so it's impossible for everyone to agree on what liberty and justice is. And um, on top of that, America has had a history of injustices that have existed after the Pledge of Allegiance was written in 1892. For example, women weren't able to vote until 1920. Uh, Japanese Americans were put in, in internment camps during World War II. And the Civil Rights Act wasn't established until 1934. Those are things that are definitely injustice, injustices to the, to the demographics they apply to. So, like, looking at that and what we have now, there's no... There's, I don't see that there can ever possibly be a time when we are all indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Everyone has a different idea of what is liberty and justice, and we can't agree on anything, like humans do. So, to, go, to move on from that, a strange thing about the Pledge of Allegiance is not many other countries have anything similar to it, especially democracies similar to ours. Uh, India and South Africa are the only countries I've been able to find that have some sort of oath that's, speak in, that's spoken by students at the beginning of the school day. Uh, countries that don't have the Pledge of Allegiance that are very similar to America are uh, Canada, Australia, the, U the United Kingdom, and uh, they, they are similar to us in a governmental stance, but they, they definitely don't have the same boasting sense of patriotism that we have. So why is it that we have such a big sense of patriotism? Well, that could partially be, be, be because of American nationalism, which the Pledge of Allegiance is sort of, part of, is sort of a part of, because from a very young age, American students are taught to stand in unison and recite in unison a thing that's dedicated to a symbol of an entire country and all of its values. That is a very big responsibility to put on kids. And it, it is, and whether or not you agree with the pledge or not, it's engraved into our heads and sort of gives this idea that America is great and that's why we're standing for it. And there's nothing wrong with being a patriot, but sometimes, sometimes patriotism, or as I'm referring to it as nationalism, it can sometimes get arrogant, show its arrogant face. We, we've seen this type of nationalism in situations like Nazi Germany, Soviet Russia, North Korea, Mussolini's, Mussolini's Italy. Not saying America's like any of those, but, you know, nationalism can get pretty bad. Uh, so, something that has been showing up in America are, you know, a lot of supremacies coming up, you know, that the Trump rallies and the KKK still exists, um, and that has been around through history. That's what nationalism can do in America. Um, so what I want to do is rewrite the Pledge of Allegiance to something that's less hypocritical and less wrong, like I've been saying. So first off, I think I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. As I said, it's a really big commitment to put on grade schoolers. Uh, it's just, the flag is just a cloth, it's not an entire nation and all of its values and plus all those things are too big to put into the minds of little kids. So let's just try to soften that a bit, that'd be good. And the, the fact that we mention it's a republic is kind of pointless and irrelevant. And as I said earlier, under God needs to go. And uh, I think we should emphasize the uh, American values more, just to be more specific and so people know what they're actually saying when they recite it. And those, those values are what everyone can agree on, our right to vote and our right to free speech. That's what makes America what it is, even though it doesn't exactly make it unique, but it's what makes America what it is. Uh, so, and as I said, liberty and justice for all is impossible, but it is a nice idea, so we should incorporate it. So, please stand for my realistic oath of respect. I stand in respect 
for the United States of America and for our rights to free speech and vote as we choose. Together, we can work towards liberty and justice for all. Thank you.